These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. So they, the question is just saying a mechanism that would take us from these starting materials to this product. Wouldn't it, would it even do it? Yeah, it would do it. Why or why not? They want a mechanism that would take us from these starting materials to this product. Yeah, I don't know, just because I feel like it wouldn't want to do it because it's tertiary carbon. Okay, well, let's uh, start with the mechanism and see how it goes. Let's see if we can draw a reasonable first step. So. So it looks like you guys have uh, made some, we, we never went through the mechanisms for the fetal craft reactions before, but it looks like you've learned those on your own, so that's good. Okay, now I think the most realistic mechanism here is, what was the purpose of attaching this aluminum here in the first place? To make it a more electrophilic, a better leaving group. Yeah, to make this uh, a better leaving group, especially, um, and also more electrophilic. Now, I think that what will happen here is that this will leave before the reaction. Oh, okay. What, what, what makes it very easy for this chlorine to leave? It's and this, tertiary carbocation. Yeah, it's going to make a tertiary carbocation. If this was a primary carbocation, you probably would have been right, and the chlorine would stick around until the benzene attacks. But for a secondary, or especially a tertiary, I think it would be more accurate to write it like this. Oh. Let me check the answer. Yeah, so in the answers they show the, the actual full carbocation being formed. Okay, now um, who's going to take this, uh, so now the hydrogen's going to leave. Who's going to take this hydrogen, yeah. this chlorine? I think that one of you I saw might have left out this negative charge over here. So we should put in this negative charge on the aluminum uh, chloride here. Um, this chlorine lost its positive charge when it left, but the aluminum still has a negative charge. Neutral aluminum would tend to have only three bonds, like boron. So when it has four bonds, it has a negative charge. generated our catalyst, and that gives us our mechanism here. So it looks like you guys have already made good progress on your own in learning the friedel crafts mechanisms. The one tricky thing here is, if we, when we add the Lewis acid to a tertiary alkyl halide, we probably are going to end up forming a full carbocation, whereas if we'd only added it to a primary, we would not form the full primary carbocation before the benzene attacks. Even with a secondary, you might show the carbocation being formed, because secondary carbocations can be formed too. Oh, okay, yeah. 
It's only for the primary that you definitely don't want to show the carbocation being formed because we don't like to form primary carbocations. Other than that, it looked like you guys were pretty comfortable with that mechanism. Write the expected major product. Good. Yeah, this is very simple. We've just memorized that with these reagents, we do a halogenation and we put on a chlorine. By the way, would we be worried at all about multiple halogens attaching here? No, because there's no strong activator. Right. In fact, is this an activator or a deactivator? Deactivator. Deactivator. So we definitely don't need to worry about polyhalogenation here if we only add one equivalent because this is going to be harder to add anything to. So that's a very simple warm up question. to write the major product. Now, usually we need sulfur trioxide. But it is T2SO4. That's sulfuric acid. I think this is just going to end up, so my prediction would be, you guys have the answers? might be my prediction. Now, what is the T here? It's just an isotope of hydrogen. We're, we're very used to using deuterium, right? Deuterium is the normal isotope, and here we're just using a different isotope of hydrogen. That initially and then eventually, yeah. Okay, so let's go through the mechanism for that. All right. Now, first of all, I guess, uh, again, your first guess, this wasn't a bad guess, your first guess is that we were going to add it, make a kind of sulfonic acid. But remember that in order to do this, we actually need sulfur trioxide. Remember, that's the fuming sulfuric acid. So I guess they could have done it if they had these reagents. I think this would have been the right answer. With these reagents, this would have been the right answer. But we don't, uh, we really, the, the, the nucleophile is really the sulfur trioxide, not the sulfuric acid here. So they, we, we only, they either have to specifically show the SO3 or they have to say fuming sulfuric acid, which means that they've added the SO3. So without the SO3, we're not going to get this product. And again, the key thing to remember is that the T is just an isotope of hydrogen. It's just going to act like hydrogen. Well, any guesses as to what's going to happen first year? The T2O That's not a bad guess, um, but it uh, turns out that won't help us to get to anything interesting here. Okay, the one of the alkene bonds will steal a T from T2SO4. That's right. Good. It should be pretty obvious that this is going to protonate somebody. It's pretty obvious it's going to protonate somebody because it's a strong acid. Now, remember that what we're thinking about is electrophilic attacks on benzene. So we can basically have attritium do an electrophilic attack. So that would give us this, and then what? It would steal the H from the same with the T. Who will steal the H? The OSO3 T. Now we can use our sulfate, that's right. Because what's the driving force to get back to the aromaticity? We always want to get back to the aromaticity.
that would give us this. And that's why they said that initially, we're going to get this. But this process can keep repeating over and over. We can keep having, um, we can keep having sulfuric acids here donate tritium to the benzene, uh, and then taking off the proton. Uh, so basically what they're thinking here is that the solvent is completely made out of tritium-containing molecules, and the sulfuric acid is tritium. So eventually, just by random give and take, all the hydrogens will be replaced by tritiums. Remember that when we started, we actually had six normal hydrogen ones here. Six normal hydrogens. Well, one by one, we're going to go through this step where the um, tritium attacks and the hydrogen gets taken off. And as long as we have this stuff in excess, eventually all of the hydrogens will be replaced by tritiums.